Hey guys, this is Steve with Good Guys to Great Men. Thanks for watching today. This weekend I've been reading some stuff and thinking a lot. And I, I came across the idea of having the life you really want or getting the life that you've always wanted to have. And so those words having or getting started to play on my mind. What does it mean to have the life you want or to go get the life you want? It implies that it's some place to go to. It implies that you're not there yet, so you better just keep banging your head against the wall and go find it or go get it or try to have it. But we're waiting for the perfect conditions where somebody might give us permission to have a happy, engaged, um, sensual, sexual uh, life of connection. And that whole idea of how do you get there? How do you stop beating your head against the wall to go find this or to go get this? And it reminds me of a phrase I heard that, that bugged me because I didn't know what it meant. And maybe I'm getting clearer today, which is what I want to share with you. The phrase was, for my coach, what if happiness, what if connection, what if sexuality, what if affection wasn't a place to go to? What if it was a place to come from? And so, and then he paused and it was dramatic. And I go, hmm, wow, that's really deep. I still don't know what the, <laughs> what the hell that means. What does it mean to to stop thinking about happiness and connection and affection and sexuality as a place to go to, as opposed to living your life as if it's a place to come from. And so I thought of something this morning that made it clear for me. Sometimes a very simple analogy is all I need to flip a switch in my head that makes me go, yeah, I think that's what's going on with me. Maybe this is what's going on with you. So here's my analogy. My family has had a slew of golden retrievers, lots of dogs, but especially golden retrievers. I've had Casey, I've had Cody, I've had Jake, then my dad had Rusty, and then there was Jasper, and Barley is the latest one. My brother's dog is Barley. The golden retrievers, if you, if you see all the, the commercials with the puppies, they were born with the most affectionate, playful, happy, connected look on their face. Their energy is total, non-negotiable love and connection, and happiness, and goofiness, and playfulness. It's, it's like we're born as children. When we're born, we're born with the same things. We don't have any fear at all about being affectionate, and connected, and happy in our own skin. We have no reason to. And I think it was um, Marianne Williamson who said that um, happiness is what we're born with, or love is what we're born with. Fear is what we learn along the way. And again, I didn't know what the hell that meant. Oh, that's a great quote. What the hell does that mean? But what it means to me now is to, to make a decision to see what's happened in your life that has caused you to act less and less and less and less like a golden retriever. Golden retrievers don't give a shit. They do not care if you're not happy. They don't care if you're not affectionate. They don't care if you're not feeling connected. They don't care if you're having a bad day. Golden, retrie <laughs> golden retrievers don't give a shit. And so why, why don't we as men start to think more like that? Why don't we believe that we can behave and embody the energy of a golden retriever and become a kind man, an affectionate man, a respectful man, a considerate man, a sexual man, a, a hugging man, a kissing man, anything we want to become? Why can't we live the life of a golden retriever who doesn't give a shit? And the answer is clear, I think, in, in that quote that love is what we're born with, but fear is what we learn along the way. We start to fear what other people will think if we're unapologetically affectionate. We're afraid what they'll do. We're afraid of rejection for our overtures of connection and sexuality and, and touch. And, and so that fear builds up into this big vessel inside of us that tells us to stop acting like a child. Stop acting like a golden retriever. But, but we're still magnetically attracted to people and animals who do that. You may know some people who don't give a shit, right? Who, who actually embody that energy where they live the life they want on their terms. They're not going anywhere to find it. They're not waiting to have it. They're not depending on anybody else's mood or behavior to give them the life they want because they're coming from the assumption that I'm already there. I am already well into the process of being that person. And that was the epiphany I had today is that I still have a lot of fear, just like you do, about what people might think, what they might say about rejection and somebody else's mood is bad, therefore I should be in a bad mood. And it's that following energy that, that makes us feel uninspiring and makes us uninspiring to the rest of the world. 
And so that's the image I want to leave you with today is if you can spend the next seven days in the skin of a golden retriever, kiss what you want to kiss, hug what you want to hug, chew up what you want to chew up, eat what you want to eat, and don't give a shit. Be that dog. Be that man. And I have a feeling it's going to liberate you from feeling like you have to fear what other people are thinking or doing or saying or whether they reject you. So I'm, after this video, I'm going to go do that. The next seven days, I'm going to do that too. I have my uh, dog here. Come here, Chance. Come here. She's not a golden retriever, but she lives that life too every single day. She sleeps when she wants to sleep. She eats when she wants to eat. And she licks me on the face whenever she damn well feels like it. So that's what I'm going to go do. I hope this was helpful for you. Sometimes analogies can just shed light on things that are a little cryptic. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.